Recruitment Selection and Training, RGCC Business 0450, Tracy Cambridge. What is Tracy Cambridge about? Here I provide RGCC and AS explanatory videos. RGCC videos include Business, Economics, Accounting, Biology, Physics, Math and English. And AS videos include Business, Economics and Accounts. You will also find tips for RGCC and AS videos. So here is the syllabus for recruitment selection and training. We're going to study the methods of recruiting, the importance of training and methods of training, why reducing the size of workforce might be necessary, and the legal controls over employment. So why do businesses recruit? Firstly, they recruit to replace staff who have left or been promoted, bring in staff with new skills, to recruit more staff as business expands. Now there are three methods. So job analysis is a study of the tasks and activities to be carried out by the new employee. Job description describes the main duties and responsibilities of the job. Job specification, uh, they state the qualifications and the qualities necessary to perform the job. For example, the educational requirements or any experience which is needed. Now for advertising the vacancy, there are two types of recruitment internal recruitment and external recruitment internal recruitment is the promotion of staff or moving workers from one job to another within the company which means it is recruiting the workers from within the company itself the advantages are that it saves time and money since you do not have to spend money on advertising the job vacancy and applicants they know the firm inside and out so they are like they are familiar with how the form works. It also motivates other workers to see that they also may get a chance to get promoted. Disadvantages are that the applicants may not bring in new ideas and it will be the same types of ideas. Promoting an employment may the other employees jealous and demotivated. Then for external recruitment, recruiting someone who is not an existing employee and will be new to the business. So this is basically recruiting someone from outside the business. Advantages are that there will be new ideas from new workers and they will be more likely to hire someone who matches the job specification. Disadvantages are that it is expensive because you have to advertise a job then demotivating for the internal candidates. Now let's look at the recruit, recruiting channels. There is internal and external. Internal is by putting up notice boards, company newsletters and email inside the company. External is that local newspaper, national newspaper, recruitment agencies and job centers. Now let's look at how the selection of staff takes place. Firstly, it is because of the application forms and CVs. So this helps them see if the applicant matches the job specification. Interviews, like the, this way they find out more information about the candidate's abilities and personal qualities. The purpose of interview is to find out if the applicant has the ability to do the job, the personal qualities, and to see if the candidate will fit in with the culture of the business. Then comes testing. So testing is that applicants may be required to undertake tests to check their ability to do the job. These tests can include skill test, which observes the candidate's skills, aptitude test to see how quickly the candidate can learn new skills, personality test to see if the personality has the characteristics that the job may require, and group situation test to see how candidates will work as a team. Now you also have part-time workers. So these are employees that work for fewer hours and a full-time worker. The advantage is that they have flexible working hours. There is less expense. Disadvantages are that the workers are less trained and it is more difficult to communicate with them. Now let's look at why employees have to be trained. They have to be trained to become more productive to decrease the amount of supervision required may lead to job satisfaction and it will reduce accidents and injuries. It will improve the chance for internal promotion. Now there are three types of training, induction training, on the job training and off the job training. Induction training is as an introduction given to a new employee explaining the company's activities and procedures and introducing them to other employees. The advantages are that it helps new employees settle in and the health and safety training will be required. Disadvantages are that it is time consuming and the wages are paid but no work will be done by the employee. 
on-the-job training is when an experienced worker within the company teaches new worker how to do the job. The advantage is that its training is cheap, it is specific for their job, and the work can be done while training. Disadvantage is that the trainer will not be getting work done. Training and uh, training won't be effective if the trainer is bad, as uh, the trainer's bad habits may also um, get the applicant influenced. Then off the job training is when training takes place off the job, which means you cannot use the term off the job in your business answer, but you could say training takes place outside the business by a more specialist, uh, by a specialist. So advantages are that trainers are experts. Trainers can be done, uh, training can be done outside of working hours in the employee's own time. Disadvantages are the off the job training is expensive and the worker may receive training paid by business and leave. Training may not be specific for the job. Now, why might a business need to reduce the number of employees? Firstly, it is because of automation, which means machines replacing humans. That also means the business turning into a capital intensive form. Factory or shop closure, business relocating to another location, demand for goods or services are falling, and business is merging. Now, there are two types of um, situations when the number of employees are reduced. First is dismissal, when the employee is told to leave because of the bad behavior, which means misconduct. Redundancy is when employees are told to leave because the business does not need a worker for that job anymore, which means that the job position is no longer required. Now, how to decide which employee to make redundant? Some workers may volunteer on their own, or they could see the length of time work, the good skills in the worker, and the worker's employment history. So businesses must be careful when advertising their job and while selecting applicants to make sure they're all treated fairly or equally according to gender and race. So this is one of the legal control over employment issue and employees will have to be protected from unfair discrimination when applying for the job, wage protection, like minimum wage, and health and safety standards and unfair dismissal. This is the end of the video. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching Crazy Cambridge. Please do subscribe, 